Hey, so I want to do a quick uh, audit here and just go over some of the findings before our call and shoot you over this video just so you kind of uh, have an idea of our capabilities and also kind of the things we look for. So the first thing I do when I when I look into these is usually um, so I went into the top spending Berlin campaign just to kind of see what the setup was. So we're running three creatives. We put a couple thousand dollars behind this group. We had you know 1,200 clicks, really low cost per click. Um, so usually that tells me a couple of things because these are uh, probably cold targets and having that low cost per click, usually it's either because we're using the audience network, which actually doesn't look like we're um, putting a ton on there or what was the spend? Yeah, I actually didn't spend it very much on the audience network. So that's actually really good. Most of the spend went on LinkedIn in the feed, which is really good. Uh, it's a lot more powerful, but you got a decent amount of impression on the audience network without having to spend a bunch. So that's actually really nice. Uh, the other thing that I look at is targeting, which is usually a big pitfall. Um, so I see 2.8 million in the targeting, which usually is a pretty broad group. I would say usually um, the big difference between LinkedIn, or one of the big differences between LinkedIn and Facebook or some of these other platforms is that the advice to go broad and let the algorithm do its thing does not quite work on LinkedIn yet. Uh, their algorithm is not as advanced. So using their more advanced targeting uh, to have more bite-sized groups. And I would say, I don't know, 30,000 would be like the smallest and maybe three or 400,000 would be like the largest. Uh, 2.8 million is pretty wide. And then as I'm looking at the targeting, this this little check mark is probably the main thing that um, led to maybe poor results because audience expansion, again, you know, it's a less mature platform than like Facebook. So you really can't trust it to just do its thing. Uh, so, in it, so setting job titles or group members, but then allowing it to expand beyond that to like whatever LinkedIn thinks is similar is really, really dangerous. And so it probably was just too broad. It probably wasn't hitting the right group. That's why you had low cost per click, but the quality was probably really suffering. Um, the other thing I would say is you, you, you really, I would really, really advise um, dialing in this a little bit. Like if I was gonna, you know, chop this down to half a million or 300,000, something more reasonable, I would have done so with uh, industry or um, by industry and or with company size. So usually you have huge varying results based on industry that you're targeting um, and also based on the company size. You know, some don't have budget and some have too much red tape. Um, but that audience expansion is probably what led to like really poor results there. Um, the other thing, uh, so I didn't check these other ones. So let me just look in another top spend one, uh, just to see if that's a common theme. Uh, so just one creative here, uh, normally you'd want a, a few more options, um, with a couple thousand dollars behind it, but that's not the, okay. So this one also has 1.8 million. This also has audience expansion and it has kind of the same thing. So I would say just off first, first glance. That's one of the big things that probably led to some poor results. And then as I did a quick check, the other thing that I saw that is probably a little more uh, a reason why we didn't see results is, so when I go into audiences, it was just uploaded lists. Um, lists that were uploaded to run ads against, um, you know, one of these campaigns. So what I don't see is any retargeting audiences. Because uh, when I go over to uh, their website and I look at their website traffic, they actually have a decent authority score. They're actually getting a decent amount of organic traffic. Um, I'm guessing their company page, oops, I'm guessing their company page gets some traffic. Um, all of those clicks and interactions uh, with your cold ads. So all that money that you spent to get in front of that group, if they did visit the website or visit the company page or 
um, interacted with that ad, those could have been retargeting audiences that we create and then retarget them with, you know, those, those ticket sales, uh, the ads, and probably would have had a lot better results. Cause from my experience, um, the cold layer of ads is basically like an investment to get digital hand raisers. Um, let me show you here. So this would be, you know, some of the frameworks that we build for, uh, for some of our clients, it's a very, very simple, cold layer, um, where we're just trying to get in front of them. And then most of the work we do is with retargeting. This is where we see 80% of the results where yes, they, they clicked into the website, they visited the company page, or they interacted with one of those cold ads, but normally, you know, they're not, I mean, so that, I think the ticket price on your, on the offer that you were selling was 600, which isn't, you know, it's, it's higher than e-com stuff, but it's still not like people usually aren't just impulse shopping as much. They really, those who showed some level of interest need to be nurtured just a little bit, even just like this 90 day um, retargeting layer and, and a push to build some kind of trust or credibility or um, FOMO or something. And so usually it's, you know, talking about the brand, talking, showing press releases, showing, um, you know, the testimonials or the experiences of people who attended, maybe some, you know, some extra highlight reels or something to get them excited. So they showed some level of interest. And usually to me, the cold layer, that's all we are really hoping for, like a handful of conversions. You're probably never going to see a great ROI here, but then you get the ROI from retargeting um, that traffic. Plus the LinkedIn insights tag can pick up on the website traffic regardless of where the traffic came from. So if you're running Google search or Facebook, or they have, you know, a couple thousand organic visitors to their page, um, you can retarget all of those, even if they didn't see your cold ads. So that retargeting ad or the retargeting layer, uh, is probably the biggest miss that I would see. And then the actual targeting and audience expansion of the cold ads, uh, would be the second biggest miss. Um, I did see that there were some, uh, so if I actually sort this by conversions and I do a breakdown by conversions, I can see that the conversions you actually wanted were, I think these Eventbrite registrations. Um, and so it looks like only, there was only one campaign that had Eventbrite registrations um, and that campaign only had, I think $700 worth of spend. So maybe that's one other thing I would have done is if, you know, if we're running this ad spend and we're trying all these different campaigns and one actually starts to get traction, I would have learned from that and, and pulled more money there. But the two biggest things is a retargeting strategy is an absolute, absolute must. Um, and then that that too broad targeting with audience expansion, I think uh, really kind of made the results suffer or almost made it impossible to, pro to see an ROI here.